Hi everyone, we're going to sit down with Katanya Kuntz and we're going to talk about quantum label busters. On We Do Pay It Forward, let's get into it. Welcome, I'm Milena Radakovic and this is We Do Pay It Forward. Welcome back to We Do Pay It Forward. My next guest is Katanya, a quantum physicist. She's got an amazing story and I can't wait for you to hear it. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, and just so everybody knows, Katanya was our closing keynote speaker at the 2024 Women's Entrepreneurship Day and Summit, and she had a standing ovation, so we had to bring her back on this <laughs> stage. Sorry, I had to put that in. Uh, your journey is absolutely incredible. Uh, we spoke a little bit, so I wanted to go back again to so you could tell the story from the beginning when you were young and how you got to be an entrepreneur now. For sure, for sure. So right now, my title is an experimental quantum physicist, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Cubo Consulting Corp. Um, I also work with a university still, the University of Waterloo at the Institute for Quantum Computing. Uh, I used to be there in person and then in 2019 I moved to Calgary and I became a remote worker. And then in 2020 it wasn't weird, everybody was. <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> yeah, and so I work on the KeySat mission. So that's oh, okay. the Quantum Encryption and Science Satellite. Um, so that's the Canadian Space Agency's first quantum communication satellite. Uh, it'll be launching soon and I'm the uh, science team coordinator. Wow, exciting. So way back when, <laughs> before I did all that, um, I was a girl reading about science and I learned about this weir weird word quantum physics and I wanted to know what was that and so I went to, I was growing, I grew up in Calgary mm -hmm. so I went to the Calgary Public Library and I looked up uh, all these different titles and, and the librarian helped me and it was very very inspiring and so um, but then I had some challenges because I'm, I'm a, a woman uh, I look a certain way and so people look at me and they don't automatically think scientist. They think secretary or lawyer or something like that and that's fantastic too, but I'm a scientist. So uh, I was a 14 year old girl. I, I was, you know, pretty and I, I, and I was ambitious and I had a lot of energy and I was very bouncy. And I bounced over to one of my neighbors and I was like, hey, guess what? I'm going to be a quantum physicist. I want to go to the university. And he said, you're going to be a very well-educated burger flipper. And my parents were with me too. And I was like, what? Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then we just walked away. Yeah. So that's where I started to learn that I needed to um, believe in myself and know that I could do it. Right. Yeah. Because there's going to be people out there that judge you and put a label on you and it's not okay. I love that story and I, you know, and one of the things that I, I'm a big believer in with my charity we do when we give scholarships to aspiring female entrepreneur, we specifically um, look for entrepreneurs in the STEM fields because I, I feel that if you're already in business and you're, you're, you've got different facets when you're studying into physics and you kind of have a little bit of a one up, but it's, it's the STEM um, entrepreneurs that are passionate about the certain aspect that nobody it's that niche and where they are really passionate like yourself mm -hmm. um, into a technology that's very unique mm -hmm. but not necessarily knowing how to build it mm -hmm. and you took your passion and became an entrepreneur and now you're the CEO of your own tech company. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit of the journey so that our audience of women who are like, I'm a scientist, I, I want to create this, but I'm really scared mm -hmm. to make it into a business. Mm -hmm. How did you go from that to, you know, taking the plunge and starting a business with it? Definitely. I am um, one of the experts, right? But I'm never going to be the expert of everything. And so I like to surround myself with people who are the expert as well that I can trust. So when I was looking into what do I want to do with my with my scientist career, right? right. I don't want to be a, a, a PI at a university and have a research group. I see how that life is. I don't want it. Okay. Um, I don't want to go work for a company and be in a corporate life that way because I've also seen how that is for engineers and I didn't want that. So I actually have a co-founder and so we were looking at our skill sets trying to figure out what kind of company can we form right. he's a businessman and an educator he's been in a teacher in in the Calgary uh, school board for over 10 years and um, and he has entrepreneurial families and uh, family members and so he has that background and so I knew about quantum 
he knew nothing about quantum. And when he heard about it, he was like, why don't more people know about quantum? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we got started. We decided um, this would be a good fusion of our talents. Be translators, communicators, and connectors of what is this technology? Why could it impact your business? How can you harness it for your business? I love that. Mm -hmm. So for the business people in the audience, mm -hmm. can you give us some tips of how we can use quantum in our business? Mm -hmm. So what is quantum? <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, yes. and, and I totally get that question all the time. And I've got the 30 second elevator pitch. So. Okay. Quantum physics is the physics of the tiny. It's the physics of the of the mo molecules, the microscopic, right? The, the, the atoms smaller than your skin cells, like that kind of level, right? So we already had a quantum 1.0 technology revolution. We right. have the microchip, we have right. lasers, we have um, solar cells, we have cameras, right? So all of these devices run on the principles of quantum physics, but you're not necessarily using individual atoms to do the computing, the sensing, the communication or whatever. So quantum 2.0 technology is where we do that. We use an atom to do the computing. We use okay. an atom to do the sensing, things like this. And so a quantum computer is a very, very powerful computer. It's a very, very powerful system. It's in the news a lot right now because NVIDIA's CEO said some things um, that I don't agree with. So there are, <laughs> there are companies right now that are using quantum systems. They may not be full-fledged, fault-tolerant quantum computers, but they are viable quantum systems that can be used for optimization problems, for example. And companies around the world are using this technology and it's not a new thing. They've been using it for the last five, 10 years and more and more being engaged. Um, actually, the city of Calgary is engaged with Cubo Consulting to explore quantum technologies, including quantum optimization. So give us an example in a layman's term. Yes. If a small or medium-sized company, yes. I'll give, let's use me as an example. My company is Nexus Exhibits. So we do visual branding solutions. We design and produce trade show exhibits, uh, event signage, et cetera. Mm -hmm. How could I use that technology to improve my business? Do you do any kind of large data set um, modeling? Or do you have any scheduling issues or procurement, delivery routes, traveling salesperson problems? Um, those types of things, optimization. Okay, so pro, um, so oh, that's a good example. So for instance, um, project management, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, we, we miss uh, like deadlines and we're always rushing for it. Gantt finish. charts and interdependencies. Yeah. So quantum computers are very good at um, handling large data sets and handling lots and lots of variables. And if there's interdependencies between the variables, usually we have to simplify those problems okay. to run them on our current computers and with AI systems. But with quantum systems, you might be able to run the full um, breadth of it. Okay, yeah. so tell me about your journey as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So with your partner, because you are too different, mm -hmm. sometimes people have partners that are on the same wavelength in mm -hmm. a sense, but it sounds like you and your partner are very different, different skill set. Mm -hmm. And what happens when in our audience, if they have a partner that's very different for them, mm -hmm. what are some of the tips in working with someone that doesn't have the same mindset or computing mindset yes. like yourself and your partner? Mm -hmm. How do you work together? I think when you have a situation like ours, um, it's harnessing what our differences give us, right? So if we're talking to a boardroom full of CEOs, they don't want to really hear me talk. Um, they do. They want to make sure that there is the technical expertise behind it, right. but they really want to hear AJ talk a little bit more because okay. he's going to give that perspective and not accidentally slip into the rabbit holes of too technical, uh -huh. right? And so that's one of our advantages right, right. now. And so it's like when I'm presenting, if, if I've gone too far down a rabbit hole, he can uh, recognize that because it's it's like wait a second now you're talking like Mars language what's going on yeah okay so it's it's finding this your uh, the benefits for a, a skill set from you versus your partner and using that and communication like even though we have such different um, skills he is learning quantum physics and I'm learning business right so like that. it's that communication overlap mm -hmm. so w for our audience so we've got uh, if they are in a very similar partnership, mm -hmm. what is, would you say, the next tip for the growth of your business? Mm -hmm. So you, you've got a, your partnership seems to be going really well. Mm -hmm. um, how, what is the next stage of working together in the growth? 
Well, we have some exciting things uh, that we could announce. Okay, that'd be um, great. Uh, Cubo Consulting is proud to be partnering with Nate, the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology, to offer quantum training courses for both executives and engineers. Oh, I love that. Wonderful. I actually, this will go into <laughs> next. So, how can our audience learn more about that program? Exactly. And also get a hold of you. Perfect. Yes. Well. Um, please check out our website, cuboquantum.com. Hopefully it's popping up somewhere around here. <laughs> and also on LinkedIn, um, Katanya Coons. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I'm one of the ones. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, and if you want to get quantum ready, uh, because it's not just quantum computers, there's also quantum communication, quantum sensors, the data security aspects, there's something called the quantum threat. Um, all of these things we talk about on our blogs, we have free talks, and we also offer these courses. And we're going to be film filming e-courses, actually filming right now. We have a green screen in our living room. It's very exciting. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be coming out soon too. Wonderful. Thank you so much again. Thank I you. really enjoyed having you. Thank you, audience, and I hope you enjoyed this episode and stay tuned for more. Bye for now. If you are inspired and want to join the We Do community, then go to wedocanada.com and sponsor and nominate the next inspiring woman entrepreneur.